I'm going to move us on to our third article, um, which is about Digidog, which is the real-life RoboCop. Um, it's Boston Dynamics Spot Robot, right. and it's been purchased and is being applied by the New York Police Department, NYPD. Um, this is suggested by community members Melanie Lopez and Steph- Seth Newsom. So thank you, Melanie and Seth, for introducing these topics to us. Um, first off, right off the bat, this robot's named Digidog. I know for Bode, you have some reservations about the name. Can I you do. share that I with do. us? I feel like this is a huge missed opportunity for Robopop. As someone who grew up watching Robocop like probably 10, 20 times, why not Robopop? Robopop sounds so much nicer, so much cuddlier, like so much more, I don't know, heartwarming and friendlier. Yeah, Digidog kind of sounds like it's from the Terminator or Black Mirror. Black Mirror, and yes. Robopop. Yes. Like, who wouldn't want a robotic puppy? Like, I huge missed puppy. opportunity. I love puppies. Huge. Yeah. All right, so let's first talk about the pros of this technology. I know it's pretty contentious, so I want to at least talk about the benefits of it. Boston Dynamics has made an incredible robot. It can carry 14 kilograms, 360-degree view, remote control, and autonomous. It can run three and a half miles an hour. It can climb stairs. They even added an arm that it can open doors. I've seen this technology being used in some of my prior workplaces to do autonomous surveilling of, you know, an entire factory and getting a 3d scan of it at a fraction of the cost and in a fraction of the time. And actually it's a lot safer. So this technology is incredible. Um, I know as far as police, sorry, I was going to say, I I know energy companies also use it as well to like inspect, inspect sites that are just too dangerous for human beings. So that's like, been another, yeah. Imagine a place that's like, you know, think about Chernobyl, a place that's really radioactive. You don't want to send people to, you can send a robot like this and to go in and do surveillance. That sounds like a great application. Police departments have also, um, NYPD and others, have been using robots like this to do great things. So a few things that come to mind, NYPD talked about a few situations where they were had a hostage situation. They were able to send the robot in with some food to you know get the hostages some nourishment. Um, I also think about a 2015 instance in San Jose, California, where there was a man on the edge of a bridge and he was armed and he was thinking about taking his oh, life. Wow. Um, and they were able to... Br- send a robot in to deliver him some pizza as well as a phone and they were able to communicate with him. He got food, nourishment. They were able to take him, talk him down off the ledge and take care of this guy. That's pretty um, heartwarming. That wouldn't have been possible without right. the robot. So those are real, you know, as like, as we, as we like to say it, robo pup applications of this technology, they're heartwarming. They're nice. They make you feel good about using, you know, technology in a way that can benefit Do good things. People. Yeah. On the other side, a lot of people have some reservations about, you know, this technology is great, but they have reservations about how this technology is being applied, specifically with police departments. Um, I'm one of those people. You know, I yeah. Let's let's hear what you think. Okay, I I understand the use cases of like using robots to again deliver food, or I think the army has been using this for a while to like inspect a bomb, disarm a bomb, or whatever. Yeah, without risking people's lives. Yeah, what I'm concerned of is is what if what. What if you start patrolling? What if you start using Spot or any robot, really, in active um, criminal situations? And, you know, these things are using artificial intelligence to understand their surroundings. And as we've discussed before, I think in multiple episodes now, artificial artificial intelligences have their own issues. Like, they're naturally biased. And Mm -hmm. if they're equipped with equipment that can help them neutralize a target and they neutralize the wrong target you start to see the implications that this can have for the society. We've talked about how the the wrong AI can be biased in job applications, which sucks. But we've also talked about how it can detect the wrong suspect for police to go after, which can can be life-threatening. And now you're putting Mm -hmm. a robotic being to not only detect, but also make the decision of what's going to happen to that suspect. And that's where I start to get uneasy. Yeah, I I think... The concern really isn't specifically with Boston Dynamics or even with NYPD. It's about this overall exactly. trend of where do robots fit into our society? Where is it okay? Where is it not? I mean, I really hear the concerns about you know this technology or similar technology um, being used to kind of like oppressively pro- over police in pro- impoverished neighborhoods, as opposed to having like um, you know being integrated as part of the community, using technology instead to kind of surveil over everyone. I don't like to feel like I'm being big brothered or watched. By I'm the in the same boat. Everywhere. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people are, especially so, with like the privacy concerns that are going on right now. For sure. I feel like a lot of people feel the same way. 
it's it, it's an inter- interesting conversation and a trend that I think will only become more and more relevant to us as the years go on with more autonomous technology and some great use cases for it. People are going to start adopting this everywhere, and it's important for us to be aware of what's going on and kind of be able to share our conversation with folks about how we feel about the position of this technology in our society. For sure. And look, if we're depending on our police departments for our safety, I I feel like this is a great opportunity to open up the dialogue about what people are comfortable with and what they're not comfortable with. And, you know, I, I, I feel like if I were to talk with the Loudoun County police, this is one of the things that I would not be comfortable with at all to be implemented in my community yet. I feel like, yeah, autonomous technology is knocking on the door. It's important for us to be able to voice our opinions and have sound opinions on where technology can and can't be used. It's in our time lives. to have those tough conversations. I agree. And again, we brought up Elon Musk before. He said if AI is impacting your life to a great extent, people should have a say about how it's regulated and how it's used. Yeah, we should be able to have agency over where AI is and isn't being used Agreed. in our lives. Dan, I think this is actually a pretty good place to end today's episode on.